I'm about to do the initial setup for the Holybro, Holybro Shuriken X1. The first thing I notice when I connect to this board for the first time is it's got Betaflight 300 on it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dump a diff of the config so I know what changes they've made to the configuration. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade it to Betaflight 301. Let's just save that in a new window. So I just copy pasted that into a new window. And then I'm going to disconnect. And conveniently, they have a bootloader button on the very front of the copter. It's very conveniently exposed. It's right next to the two LEDs, the green and the blue LED. So I'm going to unplug the board. I'm going to hold down the bootloader button. And I'm going to plug in the board. Now I have the green LED is solid, the blue LED is not flashing at all, and that's telling me I am in bootloader mode. You'll notice up here I do not see DFU. DFU is how the board indicates it's in bootloader mode if you have a board that uses virtual COM port. This board is an SP Racing F3. It does not use a virtual COM port. It has a CP210 chip, and that means you will not see DFU up here, and you do not need to do the Zadig driver thing. You can learn more about that in my video about setting up the Betaflight drivers, clean flight drivers, and troubleshooting when your board won't connect and won't flash. So now we should be in DFU mode, and we should be able to flash it. Let's just double check that I've got the target correct. I'm SP Racing F3, that is the correct target. So I'm going to choose SP Racing F3 here, and I'm going to choose firmware version 301. And I think it's going to force me to do a full chip erase anyway, but I, I usually do a full chip erase. I think that should be good. Let's see if that works. No, okay, so it may be that this board needs a manual baud rate. Let's try that. No, all right, manual baud rate. What about manual baud rate 115.2? No. Alrighty, let's try this then. I'm not in bootloader. Let's go and let's just erase the flash and then I'm going to try something else. Okay. I'm going to try flashing without being in bootloader mode. Sometimes this will work. Sometimes it doesn't work. No. Oh. Yeah, see. <laughs> if one thing doesn't work, try another thing. <laughs> I guess it's the moral of the story. The, um, the configurator can put the board into bootloader mode, in theory. Whether it succeeds at doing so is a crapshoot. So in this case, you can see that by trying to do it multiple times, it eventually, and I can see the green LED is solid now, even though I never pressed the bootloader button. The clean flight uh, configurator GUI managed to put the board into bootloader mode successfully and was able to flash. So thank goodness that worked. <laughs> yeah. So now let's just put this all back the way it was. I'm going to go into the command line and I'm going to just paste it in. It all pastes in. And I always just like to scroll back through and see if there were any error messages, and there weren't. So now I'm going to save, and our configuration should be back the way it was. Now I can go into the receiver tab and I can check my channels. And throttle 2000, 1000, great, I love S bus. Throttle, let's see, 2000, 1000 on roll pitch and yeah perfect my endpoints on my tyrannus have translated over that is almost always the case in my experience as long as it's, uh, you're using an s bus receiver the endpoints are almost always correct an x series receiver and an s bus receiver you don't have to redo your endpoints as long as you're reusing the same model uh, i use the same model on my tyrannus for all of my copters i just make sure that they're all set up identically if they're not set up identically, you'll get yourself in trouble with that. Um, the only thing I need to do is change the channel mapping. The default channel mapping is AETR. 
uh, my channel mapping is R-E-T-A. I have the rudder or yaw axis on channel one and uh, the aileron or roll axis on channel four instead of the other way around. So we'll save that and I'll just double check that everything is correct. Uh, pitch, yaw, pitch, and roll. And you can just look at the 3D model and see that it's moving correctly. With the, Yeah, everything's good there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the modes tab. I have a video I made recently about how to set up modes. I'm going to set these modes up the way I like them. The, for, I use the arm mode as low on channel 1. I do, I'm going to have air mode on all the time. And you can do that just like so by setting the entire width of the channel to be enabled. But I'm just going to do this uh, feature air mode. And I will not be using horizon mode. So I would do like to have a beeper mode. And it's going to be aux 3 I use for my beeper. Yep, and save that and beeper working. I'm not going to arm. I doesn't actually it doesn't matter if I arm uh, because I don't have a flight battery plugged in. Very nice thing about this copter is that it, the receiver is activated from USB, which means that I can test my modes. Now we're not arming here, and I wonder why. But I can test my modes anyway without having to worry about spinning up the motors. Now why didn't I arm? Do you see this didn't go green? Let's go check. The first thing I'm going to check is yeah, the accelerometer is not calibrated right. So what I need to do is hit calibrate accelerometer with the copter level. The copter did not believe that it was level. Now that it believes that it's level, the copter doesn't want to arm when it's not level because you could be carrying it in your hand and you, and you could bump the switch or something and they, they won't arm it. The flip side of that is if you're if the accelerometer is not calibrated or if you just are if you set the copter somewhere where you're on a hill or something, it won't arm. Uh, you can, the workaround for that is either to disable the accelerometer or you can go into the CLI and type set small angle equals 180. That will completely disarm it. If you use any value other than 180, for example 90, then the copter will only arm if it is less than that number of degrees off of vertical. So if in other words with small angle of 90, it would be if it was less than perfectly, you know, perpendicular to the horizon. With 45, you could have 45 degrees and so on. I love that it comes with telemetry already configured. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Very nice. Uh, lots of copters come ready to fly with a tr uh, free sky receiver, but they haven't bothered configuring telemetry or wiring it up because, for example, if you've got um, a, a spectrum receiver, then it doesn't have telemetry and the manufacturer doesn't want to have two different workflows and two different sets of configurations. So it's very nice that this copter came ready to fly with the, X, with the free sky receiver and it's configured with telemetry. Very nice. Um, other changes I want to make. I am going to change the ESCs. I would normally change the ESCs to multi-shot. I would assume that these ESCs uh, can use multi-shot. I believe these are BL Heli S ESCs. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to multi-shot. And if it doesn't work, well, we'll, we'll know and we'll go back. And uh, I need to change the center value here to 1500. Almost every transmitter is going to be that way. Uh, most of them have 1500 as the center. Uh, a few of these, few transmitters use 1520 as the center, but most of them use 1500. So that's really how that should have shipped, in my opinion. Um, max throttle 2000, min command 1000, and we'll set the maximum cell voltage to 4.4 because I do sometimes use high volt batteries. We're going to assume that this is correct. Uh, I have a video on how to calibrate the current meter. I used a Combini to do that. Uh, it would not be a terrible idea for someone to confirm that if, they, if you really wanted to know that your current was accurate. I won't be doing that for this copter because it's kind of a pain in the butt and it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of scary. I'm going to set the gyro. Look at our CPU load, 9%. We can probably safely go. This is an SP Racing F3. I think we should go to 4K, uh, 4K. Uh, with an SP Racing F3. I don't think an SP Racing F3 can go to 8K. I'm also going to disable the accelerometer because I won't be using auto level. If you're going to go to 4K PID loop rate, you also need to go to multi-shot. Okay, one shot will not be happy at 4K. I'm going to turn on feature error mode and save and reboot. CPU load is, 
I'm not entirely happy with that CPU load, 29, 30%. A little disappointed in that. Uh, let's see if we get any change if we set the motor frequency. Let's just set the motor frequency to 8,000, 8 kilohertz. We got a little drop in CPU load. Using unsynced motor speed causes a hardware PWM generator to generate the motor signal instead of the CPU doing it. And it lowers your CPU load just a little bit, but I'm still not entirely happy with it. And I would pro I'm probably going to take it down to 4K, 2K. And that's better. That's that's better. I like that better. That's all done. Let's check our failsafe. Uh, this is how I like to set up failsafe. I like to set throttle to hold, the guard time to a half a second, and failsafe set to drop. I prefer to hold throttle on failsafe um, because I'm willing to let the copter fly for a, a half a second with the throttle wherever it was and hope that it comes back. If you set it to auto, the throttle will drop whenever you get a, a stage one failsafe. And the thing about a stage one failsafe is it may recover, but if you drop throttle as soon as you go into stage one failsafe, you won't get the chance to fly out of it. So I like to have throttle on hold, but I set the guard time from one second down to a half a second because I don't want the copter flying for too long if I lose signal. So I have a half a second to get the signal back and then the copter will drop. For PID tuning, we're gonna use my standard rates, which are 1.55 RC rate, uh, 0.7, oh, this has been tweaked, 0 0.70 super rate, 0 0.70 super rate, and 0.75, and we'll, that's how I like to set my rates up. No RC Expo, this is not the defaults. They've got something going on in here. Um, I don't believe these are the default PIDs either for Betaflight. We'll leave these PIDs alone. These are not the default PIDs for Betaflight. We'll see how they fly. But I am going to change the rates. I like the rates to be identical on all of my copters. I, I, they really affect how the copter feels and how my muscle memory for where the sticks need to be interact with the copter. I will sometimes tweak the rates slightly if I have a copter that is different on pitch and roll axis. For example, a copter with a wider motor-to-motor -motor distance or different props may accelerate slightly slower. But I always start with the same base rates and then work from there if, as I feel I need to. For black box, I'm going to log at the one kilohertz rate. Uh, that's the minimum I prefer to go. And let's see what else we need to check. In the CLI, uh, I always set min check to 1005. And the reason I do that, I set max check too, to 1995, even though it doesn't actually affect anything. I do that because if you look in the receiver tab, when I lower the throttle all the way down, it always just goes right to 1000. So you want min check to be above. It has to be higher than this because if you do, your throttle doesn't go below oh, 1001, thanks for proving me a liar. If the throttle doesn't go below min check, the copter won't arm. But you don't want min check to be too much higher than this value because then you'll have a bunch of dead band at the bottom of your throttle. So since my throttle consistently hits 1000 or sometimes 1001, I set it to 1005. And then we'll check min throttle, but I'm just going to leave min throttle the way it is. Uh, it's probably fine. With BLHeli SESCs, you usually see the motors spin up or what, around, 2000, uh, around 1020. It's actually surprisingly consistent. And so 1040 or maybe 1045 is a decent min throttle for this type of setup. Multi-shot, BLHeli S, etc. I believe we are ready to fly.